Welcome back everybody, it's Cape Rugby TV. We're taking a look back at 2021. There were ups and downs, there were stops and starts, and a number of uh, um, uh, initiatives that we saw in the world of club rugby that really took, let's just say, took the bull by the horns and allowed uh, these difficult conditions not to get um, the, the spirit of club rugby down. Um, Gareth Jordan, one of the coaches at Unimill, has joined us on the show before. Uh, and spoke to us a few months ago about how they're reaching out of their players, keeping them active. Ja Gareth joins me back on the back on the show now. Gareth, how are things there with you? JP, how's it going? All good. Thanks for having me back on. Good to be here. Gareth, uh, you heard my little intro there. Uh, 2021 certainly has been an interesting year, positives and negatives. Um, would you say more positives? Well, maybe that's the wrong way to, to phrase this question. Let's look at some of the positives. You guys at Unimol, you didn't you didn't stand back for this thing. You 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 kept your foot on the gas and and you did everything that you could to stay connected to your members. Yeah, JP, um, Unimol, true to form. Uh, you know, my, I cast my mind back to the drought um, where we didn't stop and we had to um, think on our feet and, and and come up with novel ways to to keep the players going and keep prepared um and yeah that seemed to carry on over into the last 18 months to two years i suppose um and as i said to you guys a few months ago we we made the decision to put uh the person before the player right back oh, during lockdown um, yeah. created support groups and uh coaches turned from coaches to sounding boards i suppose um and yeah it was important for us to to, to keep our doors open and uh, to show our community and, and and our supporters and our players that um, you know we weren't going to be defeated really um, and and it was great to see the reaction from our club and from our community helping each other out wherever they could uh, regardless of how big or how small the contribution was and it wasn't all, all, always monetary or, or, or financially based it could have just been a phone call or or, or, or a video call um so back to your original statement earlier on uh, you know we've chosen to try and look at the positives as, as much as possible yeah, and uh, yeah, negatives yeah. have been spoken about enough over the years we've seen Unimil do incredible things from hydration drives to feeding schemes to yeah the list goes on and on and on um when the difficult times came gareth uh, during COVID, and you had to and you realized that that uh, people were struggling um life was getting pretty difficult for individuals, their families, the, the list just goes on of difficulties. Um, we, we kind of got the feeling, looking from the outside, that Unimol takes to it naturally. It's something that you've been doing for years. Um, did you feel like you kind of got into your groove? It was, a, it was not a, a major uh, step in a different direction for you? Yeah, I must... Um... It did seem to be pretty seamless. Eh? Um, as I've said before, play, uh, person first. Um, I mean, the, you know, the generosity of, of, of the people at our club and, and they're willing to go out of their way, like I said, to help anyone, no matter how, no matter how small. Um, and it's been like that ever since I've been uh, at Unimal, which is about four or five years now, I think. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a seamless transition and, and, and coaches, you know, came on board, committee members came on board, players came on board. Um, and yeah, it was really cool to see everyone supporting each other. So, so nicely. Yeah? Gareth, was there a time that, that you guys had to make a decision, um, on whether or not you open the fields, uh, whether you, uh, uh and you, and, and, and do that for the sake of keeping everybody connected? Yeah, unfortunately, the decision to keep the field open or closed isn't ours. Uh, that goes to the city. Uh, yeah. I think if we had our way, we would have had it open um, a lot more if we could have. Um, and we did push to to keep it open for as long as possible or to get it open as early as possible because, we, we, you know, uh, a community rugby club is it's about the community. So uh, you need to keep it open to, to engage with your members and... Um, uh, we felt definitely felt a responsibility towards them to provide them with that social interaction, yeah. whether it be distanced or not. Uh, you know that outlet. Uh, you know, get rid of that frustration or 
You know what I mean? We definitely felt a responsibility to the mental side, I think, more than anything else. The side that's not really spoken about um, too much. So let's just talk a little bit about the stuff that's not spoken about too much. Have you found during the year or even the last maybe two years, people coming to you and saying, well, you're, you're a club rugby coach, but you're not playing rugby. Um, what could you possibly be doing? Um, and then maybe finding yourself in that, uh, in that uh, end of those circumstances where you have to explain to people who, who maybe don't understand how the heart or pulse of a club <laughs> operates. Yeah, I mean, teaching, uh, coaching is like teaching, eh? So um, there is that element of responsibility that you have to look after and care and, and, and I suppose make sure that the people you're working with are, are okay, really. Um, so perhaps that comes from a teaching background, I'm not too sure. Um, I don't think people really ask questions. I think people were just grateful uh, yeah. to anyone that kind of, uh, reached out and 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 helped them that uh, you know um and and i've said it before it was really it was really inspiring to see people help in like the smallest way um it, it, it didn't matter if people had nothing they might they might have they might have given up their time yeah uh and there were so many stories of that um that i think kept a lot of people going talk to me a little bit about the rugby side of things um well, we, we just had a, almost a 10-minute interview without talking about the actual rugby side of things. Um, the, the actual skills of the players, the, the fitness, the conditioning, um, how, how difficult was it, it to manage that? Um, clearly, uh, in a season where uh, circumstances are completely different to any other circumstances that we've ever seen before, periodization might have changed completely, nutrition changed completely, timing and training and recovery changed completely. How much of an adjustment did you have to make um, during the year? Uh, I think the adjustment when we get back in January uh, and we have an official preseason will probably be tougher than the adjustment we had to do over the last 18 months or so. I mean, it, it literally everything went out the window. Uh, it, was, it was relatively easier right at the beginning because you know everyone was sharing their workouts and challenging each other because we thought you know we're only in this for maybe a couple months but the longer it rolled on obviously the more difficult it became uh we had guests coaches guests physios guests referees uh on zoom calls uh you, you, you know we just had so many things uh, going on to try keep uh, everyone connected so yeah, you're right. Everything went out the window. Uh, I think I think players are are, are going to struggle uh, to get back into the uh, match fitness uh, mode of things. I think general CrossFit fitness and and you know hitting the tar and, and, yeah. and having a bit of a run around is okay. But once the once the friendly starts, I think I think players are going to realize just how much two years has taken out of them. Uh, last question. When do you guys open again next year? And have you got big plans for 2022? We're approaching it as uh, the biggest season ever. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we really, we, so are we. we're really yes. keen uh, and ready to go. Uh, we, we open up again on the 11th of January. So that's when our official preseason begins. Um, and yeah, we're really looking forward to it. I think players and coaches and, you know, I think everyone's just keen to get their teeth sunk into a, a, a full season. Um, so yeah, we, we, we're really ready to go. Gareth, we'll leave it at that. Mercedes Yoon, everybody at, at Unimol, well done. Nolene and the team um, and Ish, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, thanks for, for all the hard work you guys have done in this year. Thanks for making the extra mile, going the extra mile to keep the players active. And um, we tip our hat to you folks. And we're looking forward to the biggest season ever in 2022. Thanks, JP. I really, uh, I really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, let's hope we, next time we chat, we've, we've had some action. Thanks, Gareth. Uh, Gareth Jordan there, folks. Of course, the uh, um, coach at uh, Unimil and uh, we're looking big forward to big things in 2022.
But folks, well, of course, as you know, on a weekly basis, we go down to MCAM 24-hour pharmacy. And uh, of course, uh, MCAM 24-hour pharmacy have made a pledge to you, the customer, that they will be open for you this festive season. And they will always be there for you. And I think that this is absolutely fantastic, especially during these uncertain times where we're not sure what's going to happen tomorrow. But what you do know is that MCAM 24-hour pharmacy will be open tomorrow and they will always be there for you. And I love the fact that the staff at MCAM 24-hour pharmacy have all made this pledge for you that they in fact will be there 24 hours a day, seven days a week over the festive season. And that really does bring a sense of comfort during these difficult times. And that's what we need is we need that stability, that sense of comfort that you know there is always somebody to go to. Well, the staff at MCAM have made their social media videos in which they've made this pledge to you. Belinda Scabot is the uh, manager of the MCAM uh, pharmacy clinics. And uh, here's her social media video. Hello, I am Belinda Scabot, the clinic bestuurder van MCAM 24-year apteek. A belofte van myself and my span van uitstekende sisters. Aan al ons waardevolle patiënte en kliënte is dat ons hier sal wees vir jou en jou familie gedurende die feestseisoen. Ons is oop van maandag tot zaterdag van 7 uur die ochend tot 8 uur die aand. Sonde aan publieke vakantie daar van 8 uur die ochend tot 8 uur die aand. Dankie. So you can reach out to Belinda. She will be there with the pharmacy that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week over the festive season, delivering the gold standard as we've come to know. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll carry on talking club rugby. Back in a sec.